Welcome in, everybody, to the fabled wall of sound behind me here on the Rancho in Santa Rosa, California. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Those of you who have been on the channel for uh, a few years will know that vintage audio has been one of my passions here, particularly the restoration of vintage audio. But I choose to concentrate on an area... I do enjoy doing tube amplifier repairs and bringing back old tube units, but I also do a bit with solid state too. And uh, for years have repaired a lot of units, uh, half the units you see behind me circa 1959 to 1980. Half of these units have been restored and these represent some of the milestones in vintage audio, particularly when we came into that golden age where instead of just focusing on sound, the, the major manufacturers, the pioneers, the, the Fishers, the Kenwoods, the Morances, et cetera, et cetera, really went to town to try to make what I call eye candy or really exciting looking units that had a lot of pizzazz, a lot of color to them, a lot of, uh, a lot of different uh options and it was really quite the thing in the 1970s 80s into the 90s to have a really nice stereo unit at uh, at home and it's something that i've enjoyed very much collecting them from my pioneer 1959 unit here all the way up to my uh kenwood 9x one of a monster you can't really see it on the top shelf but People always ask me, Rosie, I'm just, I'm interested in vintage audio. Uh, tell me the upside of vintage audio and tell me if you had to buy one particular unit, what would you do if you were just starting out in vintage audio? Lord, now look, before we get, I'm not suggesting that you go out and get, I'm not even, this is like half of what I have, okay? I have a wall of amplitude over here that you can't even see. But, yeah, it does get a little addictive, but some people just want to have one unit that defines cool. And they don't have the money to go out and buy a blue face Marantz uh, and uh, some of the higher end models. They just want a decent unit. So we're going to talk about it today. And before I get into my favorite one to recommend to people starting out or just wanting one cool piece of vintage gear to have at home, can I ask you to take a second to hit the subscribe button and the bell for all notifications because, well, we do everything from vintage audio to metal detecting to life-threatening live streams <laughs> and cooking demonstrations. There's just so many things we do, uh, we do here on the channel. It's the ultimate variety channel now in its 12th year here on YouTube and I would love you to be a part of it so take a second to subscribe and hit that bell for all notifications so you don't miss a thing all right let's get into it now collecting vintage audio is a great thing and if you're kind of an economy minded person like me meaning that you just don't like to take your money shovel it into a furnace and just burn it up right well then you're like me you don't rush off to the store and buy these new black plastic box led readout uh, uh am fm stereo units they weigh about three ounces okay yeah they're gonna get like a thousand watts of power and stuff but watts are for you we're not going to get into that we'll talk about it that in a future episode there's clean watts and cool watts and then there's just ridiculous ghetto watts okay i live in the hood here full disclosure i i know hood music i know what's in the trunk of these things that bomb down the street here uh, we don't even have quiet hours, but between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. in the morning. I know ghetto hood blasting, okay? But we're here today to talk about uh, a unit that I think is really cool. And what is it? Drum roll, please. It is the Pioneer SX780. And uh, let's go down and take a closer look at it here on the shelf of the wall of sound and don't worry we're going to have a demonstration in a little bit at the end you're going to want to stick around because this baby's got a lot of flashbang boom to it not only that 
it's a heck of a union and it is extremely well regarded because there's a lot of people in the 1970s that considered that Pioneer was making the very best mass market gear. And this Pioneer SX780 was made between 1978 and 1980. It's got a little age to it, but it's got a cool factor that I think is amazing. All right, let me zip my lip, get over here, get you in position to check it out. And there is two. Listen to how clean that sounds. 40, no one has ever 45 watts. <laughs> Lent and that boxing will be in the 2028 Olympics. Or you may have found us on one of our. Your eyes all the way. mid-80s the next couple of days. It's going to be cooler Saturday and Sunday. We'll be heading down into the upper 70s. I'm Karen Lehman with another hour of the greatest songs of all time. Steve Lawrence what? on the way. We'll hear from Ella Fitzgerald and system. Linda Ronstadt too. Michael Buble right now with his trumpet player Jamani Smith. Come rain or come shine. Jazzy 93.7. So the question is, what makes this such a highly collectible unit in the world today? For one thing, you have meters instead of just single tuning meters going back and forth that give you signal strength. You can actually check the matched wattage output from your left and right channel over here. And as this, uh, as this goes... You can actually see that jumping to and fro though so you can get a visual output people just really like the elegant styling on this also on this there were there weren't a million different uh, control variations you could have fm muting which i have off right now so did i pick up every between stations everything but if you have fm muting on it's only going to pick up your uh, strongest station some people prefer that but everything is very antenna dependent when it comes to uh, FM. Also, look at the very clean and elegant design of the front face place. You have your indicator, whether you're AM, whether you're FM, or phono, or auxiliary. You also have your stereo indicator here. And then over on the right, you do have your signal Classical meter. PDFC but just PDFC. for AM. So that's what makes that different. Okay, but for all of them up on top side, you have the uh, you have the FM signaling. So it's like a two in one. And the sound is so clean. that are set to take place tomorrow we're neither cut we just or listen to how clean it is when you get a good signal it's just amazing so that is it that's my very favorite mid-market unit now as far as high-end we'll talk about that in the future there's some stuff up here with the with the uh, walnut cases that can run up to uh, two thousand dollars for one of these old fishers but let's just suppose you wanted to go in and just find a unit that would be it would look great it would be impressive 
it would be, uh, I don't want to say it would be a chick magnet, okay? But it would be a talking piece. It would be a conversation piece, a real throwback. And the sound is incredible. People talk about wattage, 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 okay? Watts mean nothing unless it's really clean. And this has an incredibly low 0 0.05 distortion, which means 99 and 5 one hundredths of the sound is coming through pure is measured by, uh, uh, by, me by measuring with a uh, distortionometer like I have in the uh, shop there. So it's an, it's an amazing, amazing unit. You can find these today for about $300 to $500, $600. It depends. If you're going to buy one, know this. It's going to hold its value. It's not going to be like that black box piece of plastic. It's going to look like every other black box piece of plastic. And that when that wears out, I mean, we still repair these things. I repair this stuff all the time over here, okay? New Darlington power packs and things in there, I'll tell you. It, it's fun to do it, but it's nice to have something that's built like a tank that's going to last. And this thing just it, it performs absolutely beautiful. I don't like to invest in stuff that's going to go down in price. And some of this stuff I've had for 15 years and the price has just gone up and up. Because what's old is new again. And people understand that uh, they just don't want to buy junk. They want something that's substantial, solid, kicks butt out there. And it has a certain cool factor too that nobody else has. So it's not all about the watts, the watts, the watts. What's up? Okay, it's not the watts in there. So for my money, the Pioneer SX780. If you're just getting into uh, vintage audio collecting that's the one i would go for in a future video we're going to talk about sony and what made sony so incredibly uh different in the uh, golden age of stereo something they chose not to do that everybody else was engaged in once again if you're not subscribed before we go out we're going to have a nice listen with the unit here on the wall of sound so stick around for that at the end you're going to love that and if you're not subscribed subscribe hit the bell for all notifications and check the playlist down below there's hundreds of vintage audio restorations rescues going out and picking up stereo consoles and trucking them home and getting them working and refinishing them and fixing them up and doing tube work and every other kind of work in here right now we have a Marantz 4420 quadraphonic unit that's on the bench in the workshop make sure you subscribe and you are a part of it so as i close out here today thank you again thank you for being part of the channel and uh, vintage audio is on the upswing and that pioneer sx780 i get tingly just thinking <laughs> just thinking about that all right guys thanks so much for watching